Well, with increasing regulation, legislation and taxation at Property Tribes, we increasingly see first-timer landlords coming onto the forum and asking, is buy -to -let still a viable investment? And joining me to discuss that is John Eastgate from One Savings Bank, the overarching company that uh, has the Interbay and Kent Reliance uh, buy -to -let mortgage brands. And John, um, it's an interesting question because, first of all, that land first time a landlords coming onto the forum to ask this does show that there is increasing awareness in the wider um, mainstream areas that buy to let is facing some challenges uh, yes it does and and, and buy to let has had a lot of press comment to reflect that the, the, those challenges and it's, it's actually quite encouraging to see people coming onto the forum to ask the question because mm. I think that the difference between now and perhaps three or four years ago is that people wouldn't have asked the question. People would have just charged it into buy to let as this um, way to make a quick buck. House prices were flying up, rents were easy to get, um, and that was the end of the story, wasn't it? I think there's a much greater realisation now amongst uh, amongst people thinking about investing in buy to let that there's a bit of effort involved in it and, and there are a few cost barriers that need to be overcome in the first place. So the short answer to your question is, Yes, it is still a viable investment. The slightly longer answer to your question is, it is, but you need to look at it for the, in, in the long term. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're looking in anything less than 10, 15 years even then, then you, you, you're starting to take some risks that, that you may not A, fully understand and B, f be entirely comfortable mm -hmm. with. So for a first-time landlord starting out, um, my advice, I don't know if you concur with this, is obviously to seek professional advice. Yeah and that would be to work with a reputable mortgage broker and also with a tax advisor because you want to build a, p a portfolio on solid foundations and if you get it right at the beginning, it's really going to save a lot of potential heartache um, and be more profitable in the long term if you get it right from the get-go. I, I absolutely agree. I mean, I, I, taking the mortgage broker aspect first, a, a relationship with a good mortgage broker and a mortgage broker who understands the buy-to-let market specifically mm -hmm. is utterly essential because the, the buy-to-let market is actually quite complex and uh, the, the, the number of different products that exist to serve landlords within that market is, is growing you know, month on month mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's almost impenetrable to the individual. So you need to find a mortgage broker who knows that market and you know I think something in excess of 90% of, of buy-to-let mortgages are, 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 are sourced via a mortgage broker. So that's mm -hmm. essential. I think the, the, the tax advisor one is, is, abs is, is never more important today than it, than it has been, uh, to be honest, because if you get, if you set off on the right foot, then um, as with any form of financial planning, you need financial advice. If you set off on the right foot with your buy-to-let portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, with with the appropriate with appropriate tax advice in place, mm -hmm. then you position yourself well for a making sure you maximise your income during the, the period of time you have the asset, and then and then b there'll come a point where you don't want to have the asset, you want to get the value out of it, and mm -hmm. your and good tax advice will set you up appropriately for that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What sort of um, loan to values would you recommend that newcomers start at? I mean, clearly the PRA is dictating that uh, first timer landlords are going to require larger deposits, um, typically speaking. Um, I'm kind of always thinking more sort of around the 50 to 60 percent LTV is a, a kind of healthy place to be? Uh, I would agree. Um, I, I mean, our, our average LTV is slightly above that, um, but typically our, our, our typical landlord is a, is a multi-property landlord, and, and, and that means we look at it slightly different. But, but as a new landlord, mm -hmm. I'd be looking to go in at 50 to 60 percent LTV, and ideally, actually, I would like to grow my portfolio and, and stick to as close to those sorts of levels mm -hmm. as I possibly can. Depending upon where you are in the country, uh, you might not have any choice other than to put fairly substantial deposits down because of the, the way in which the affordability rules for buy-to-let work, and these are industry rules as opposed to lender-specific rules, mm -hmm. the way in which those rules work now actually will typically demand, particularly if you're anywhere near London or the South East, mm -hmm. pretty hefty deposits. The further north you go, then you might be able to get a little away with mm -hmm. it, or certainly out of urban areas, then you might get be able to get away with slightly lesser uh, deposits, mm -hmm. but uh, as soon as you're in the southeast, then you you probably start capping out at 60% loan to value anyway. To be mm -hmm. frank, 
So important as well for first-time landlords to actually crunch all the numbers mm. and to really understand uh, what their net cash flow is going to be month on month. Because I'm sure you'd agree with me also that landlords should focus on cash flow first um, rather than capital appreciation unless they have some very uh, significant other income from somewhere else. I mean, cash is king. Yeah. You know, any, any business, cash is king. Um, I, I've had that drummed into me for, for through over many, many years of, of lending money. Um, so it can't be over, overstated. Um, and a landlord needs to think about the fact that they're going to have to part with cash and possibly part with cash, not just to cover things like voids, mm -hmm. but to cover things like significant repairs that might be required on the property. I mean, the boiler would be the classic example and, and things like that. So you, th there is a, a need to have a, a, a you know, an accessible pot of cash um, to, to cover these particular uh, incidents. Indeed, I call it a rainy day fund. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sure most people would yeah, fix the roof as well. Yeah. Yes, and I think one thing that I, I notice that first-timer landlords tend to do is that they automatically kind of jump to a new build flat in a city centre. And I, I don't, I, I'm not a big fan of flats myself, actually, because I believe that the service charges really bite into cash flow and they can be oversaturated. Um, my feeling is that landlords uh, should find out where the tenant demand is first and then that will almost dictate the type of property they buy. Well, you wouldn't start a business in any line without doing a little bit of market research. Mm. So why would you go into being a landlord without doing a little bit of research? You need to understand your market. You know, so I'm, I'm paying for two sons in university towns at the moment and, and I, I actually know one of their landlords and, and, and he's an individual who knows his market phenomenally well and serves it extremely well. Um, so I think it's really essential that uh, you, you go into these things with your eyes wide open because, I mean, slightly connecting with your previous question, another cost that a landlord needs to reflect upon is the cost of their time that they're going to have to invest in making sure that that property is maintained and that the tenant relationship is satisfactory. Mm, indeed. We mentioned the mortgage broker, the tax advisor. I think there's a third uh, person in the team for first-timer landlords and that is a reputable lettings agent because obviously increasing legislation, very harsh penalties for getting it wrong, up to £30,000 per offence. Uh, landlords can't afford to be ignorant and also um, I think when you're starting out, do you think uh, it's really good for a first-timer to go for a fully managed service first while they kind of learn what they've got into? I think un unless you as an individual have, have an enormous amount of free time at your disposal, then uh, then effectively outsourcing the management of the property to, as you say, a reputable mm -hmm. lettings agent makes an awful lot of sense. Mm -hmm. As you grow your portfolio, as you begin more experience, as you, as you become more comfortable dealing with, with your portfolio, mm -hmm. then perhaps you can look to, to you know, start taking some of the responsibilities on for yourself, but that, that's you growing a business. Mm. You know, and that, that, that really just reinforces the importance of looking at the investment in buy to let as if as a commitment, as, a, as, as, as an entry into a business, something that's going to require, you know, your, your, you know, some intellectual horsepower from you as well as your financial horsepower to keep it going. Mm, indeed. And do you think that landlords should start off investing close to home? Uh, we often have this question on the forums because they say, oh, there's not affordable property near where I live. But I think going further afield has even additional risks and pitfalls. Yeah, categorically. And um, I, I, you know, I speak from bitter experience from uh, falling into an accidental landlord scenario some years ago where, you know, an hour and three quarters each way to flick a switch on an oven to prove that it did work. Um, <laughs> wasn't particularly enjoyable experience. But those, those little things, you know, they matter. You know, and if you have that on a regular basis, then mm -hmm. you know it's a colossal cons you know, amount of your time that it consumes, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the stats show that most landlords tend to st stick relatively close to where they are. At. That's mm -hmm. probably a function of accident rather than design. Mm -hmm. But I know that now with with some of the dynamics of the buy to let market changing, people are starting to look a little bit further afield for in pursuit of yield, for example. Um, there is some rationale to that but it needs to be entered into very carefully mm -hmm. because the further away you go the less you know what you're dealing with. Quite. So if there was one top tip that you could give to a first-timer landlord who is thinking of starting out into buy to let what would it be? Oh gosh one. Um, get, <laughs> um, get some advice yep. and do your research. <laughs>